come up Very here. Very interesting. Come over here, Mark. All right, so this is our mastermind yeah. meeting for uh, Friday morning, the uh, 1st of December. So we had an interesting deal that happened last night. What, ha what happened? Well, it's a deal that didn't happen, and despite everybody's best efforts to put it together, this came down to a customer who has had negative experiences and a lack of trust in our industry, I believe, as a whole. And because of a blemish on a uh, left rear wheel that we had already ordered a replacement wheel, told the client that we ordered the replacement wheel, were completely transparent that we discovered it, they were not responsible for it, and um, they, we were continuing. All we needed to do was do the test drive, get them into finance, finish up the business from their deposit two days earlier, and make it a done deal. On the test drive, they discovered a scuff, probably a wedding band scuff, at the 10 o'clock spot on their leather steering wheel, um, which is commonplace. Um, and that was evidently a, we're not driving it off the lot until that's fixed deal breaker for them. Despite our commitment in writing to make sure that that problem was dealt with too. So we've got a low trust factor based on experience with, I think, our industry as a whole. And it was a deal that would have rounded the month out. It was, uh, you know, six o'clock in the evening, last day of the month, and they walked. And so. So I think that's uh, very And I involved management. Barry went in, let them know that programs on that car that we had committed to in paper were ending today. Despite all that, they just couldn't get over themselves, and we didn't have a deal. So I, I think a couple things about that situation are, are pretty interesting. First of all, this was a dealer trade. So the, the damage that is on the car presumably happened at the other dealer. Um, and you guys do dealer trades periodically, but, but what does that say about when you pick up a car? Well, well, I think it happened when it was put on the carrier, actually. On Bill's it's, carrier, yeah, because Bill brought it back. Right. I don't know that there's really any way that that could happen because if if it hit that carrier in any form at all, he would have noticed. Well, it's so it evident that it, I mean, if you're picking up a car and it wasn't raining, and you're putting it up on a carrier, and now well, the wheel is eye level to you, you're not going to miss that. You're not going, and especially with driving it up with the cut on the steering wheel. Well, and, and that's the thing. No, he didn't drive it up. It went onto a trailer. I know that, but he um, drove it onto the trailer. Oh. So somebody got behind the wheel and drove it up. Well, on the trailer. I think what you're getting at, getting back to your original question, is a thorough walk around of any car that's being picked up on a dealer trade, whether it's us, whether it's Bill, whoever it is. That's a lesson learned for me because I've been on two dealer trades as a green pea, one in Santa Cruz, one in Oakland. And I just, you know, got in the car, came home, boom, done. Started driving. And, you know, not knowing any better. So, well, and, and I think that that happens a lot. So I encourage you when you guys are out doing your dealer trades, you know, make sure that you walk over that car, especially because 90% of the time you're driving the car back that you sold. You know, so if you notice something up front, then you have a chance to address it. If that car makes it all the way here, it's it doesn't ours. matter what's wrong with that car, it's ours and we have to fix it. So if there is some, for example, what you guys were talking about, do you do we contact you immediately, or do we let I them walk, know? Be we like, let them know. I will walk right pictures. back into the dealership and go, hey, this is this is up with this car. You know, what what should we do? Because then they know. Call my you boss. Know. Yeah. yeah. You call my boss. You know, so that's a big deal. The other thing that I, I think I think another is, thing would be to snap pictures of it with our phone, mm -hmm. get that sales manager's phone number so we can have record that we sent him those pics of that so well, we have a clear trail. Easy. I mean, basically, of, I mean, th here's the problem with people that don't do dealer trades doing dealer trades is that nobody knows, and then you trial by error. So when you do dealer trades, it's you, you should walk around the car, make sure you match the ID number. <coughs> we've had cars that have that have come to back to the dealership that's totally the wrong car because mm -hmm. nobody checked the ID number. Then you're tripping a car in the system that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So, but but I mean, you just walk around it. It's just common common yeah. common sense. Just like you're buying the car. Well, no, just that like you're in receipt of a car that you don't want to be charged the damage to. 
the other thing that I want to point out too is you have to be very careful when you are pointing out flaws because the first flaw that you point out creates a witch hunt. Now we're looking for every other flaw that's on the car. And I'm not saying that you know pointing out a flaw on a car is a bad idea. I think it's a good idea. But just be prepared right. to now we're going to go over this car with a fine tooth comb. We know there's something wrong somewhere. Now we're going to see what else is wrong. Right. Wait, wait, you're you're starting a witch hunt on whose part? On the customers in in the customer's mind. Yeah. Now it's now like, okay. Well, wrong? what else yeah. are they hiding from me? What else? Yeah. What else is wrong? Well, I mean, so this so, case in point because see, we had the exact same thing happen on the <coughs> GLI deal with Excuse Waylon me. and I. So you know, these people drove seven different cars, and then you know, it all came down to numbers. So instead of the GTI at six grand off doing a lease, we went to a GLI, which had a better lease. And anyway, when the car came up to take delivery, detail parks it, people are standing right there in the, in the turn. What happened to the wheel? Somebody had rashed it. Somewhere between our test drive and detail, they nailed the, they nailed the curb back wheel. They curbed the back wheel. <laughs> Halfway through the wheel. Oh. So I went out there and I said, don't worry about it, we'll fix it. Okay. No problem. Simple. We'll get that would have been a really good attitude for these people last night. Well, because 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 people. they don't trust. When people don't trust, and, and let's face it, they're not committed. They're not committed. If well, they were committed and they then they believed in the deal and they believed in us, they would have signed last night. Because now what's going to happen is when the new programs come out and we fix the wheel and we bring them back in and their payment goes up or the, the out the door goes up, they're going to say, well, that's not what we agreed to. Thank you very much. Goodbye. If you don't think that's going to happen, oh, I know it's going to happen now though. because Barry went out and told him he was completely transparent. These yeah, so. programs go away tomorrow. We I, don't know what November brings. Right? Did anything change on that? No, no, we lucked out on that one. Okay. Because we'll just because there was there was a lot of this month. yeah there was a lot of Tig ones that were sold last <laughs> month. So <laughs> so those those incentives could have very easily gone backwards because if if they don't see an issue selling the car. You know, right. and they don't have to create that urgency by putting incentives on it. They'll take it away, and and that's exactly what's happening with the Beetle right now. There are no incentives on the Beetle at all. There's no okay. interest rate. There's no lease. There's no cash. There's no nothing. So bread and butter. Yeah. You I know, mean, that's their their trademark. I mean, but you know. but I I think that the the trust issue, the the underlying issue, is the, I think most of the people that walk in the door here before they meet us. Right. They have that same outlook, so you know, and we do we do the best that we can to get past it. Sometimes, how did they see the yeah. wheel? Did you go out there and go, "Hey, I want to point something out to you"? Or did I they was go, told to be upfront and point that so you out, to it out to. I was told by my manager. Right. So to, you you pointed it out to on me. the way out to go do the test drive. Right. They showed up for the appointment. We had already gotten their deposit. This is last night. I said, "Hey, just wanted right. you to know, our detail guy has already discovered a flaw in the car. Because he curbed another you know, wheel." And, uh, you know, we've discovered it. We're, we've already, I, and I'm telling her, we've already got the wheel ordered. Mm -hmm. This is a done deal. We will go on paper contractually saying we're taking care of this. So did you learn no to do deal. that again? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, no. no. Stand right that's, that I don't wheel. know that's, what my next move is. Let me open that door. Yeah, yeah no, that's, 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 that's not driver. the case. And, and I would have handled it the exact same way. You know, because if, if you are covering something you know. up, then it people people are going to notice it. People are going to notice a change in your demeanor that's going to put them on the defensive. If you allow that to come through. Well, yeah. Well, and you know, the minute they I mean, put their there, hands on the wheel, he goes, oh, that's going to bother me. What is that? And it was just, you know, yeah. it was a wedding band scuff. You can tell that somebody's band scuffed it. Told you. I have the same, scuff, I have the same the scuff on my steering wheel and my jet, and it probably took electrical me one tech. day to put it there. Electrical tech? Huh? Yeah, black electrical tapes. What I yeah, there, you go. there you go. <laughs> that sounds like the answer to me. You know that ten and two thing is overrated. I like six. Yeah, I like, I like six. six. Right there, baby. Six. 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 <laughs> All right. So I think I think there's definitely some lessons to be learned there. So we'll get that car glued back together. We'll get it on the road. What do you got? <clears throat> you with the face. Um. Will be buying a Scion today. Uh, the other day uh, with Wayland, 
Um, I sold a car, was it a 2018 Tiguan? Um, it was uh, people that came in, I, you've, you've seen them before. Um, they came in before, uh, pretty much we gave them all we could and then they left and then bought a car elsewhere and then they came back that day. And um, they were really, um, it was really difficult because uh, I was while I was showing the car, to the wife that really wanted it, the husband was just writing down numbers, and so was the um, the dad was looking at other dealer trades, um, seeing if he can get dealer a better. Shows. Yeah, and uh, was was seeing if uh, he can get a better deal as, elsewhere. And then at the last minute, um, you know, Aaron gave him gave him uh, all the the deals and showed him what he had for that car. And they were trying to like push the prices down and uh, he said no and then at the end they knew it was a good uh it was a good deal and so they bought the car well and and we had an ad unit they didn't want the ad unit so we jumped them up you know let them know that there was going to be a difference in the payment so i showed them what the difference was going to be you know dad asked me he said you know hey can we do that without the 500 dollars down and i told him no and then um Ten minutes later, the son asked, he said, hey, we can do this right now if we don't need the down payment. And I told him, I said, if I could do it without the down payment, now I'm a liar because I told you ten minutes ago I couldn't do it without the down payment. <clears throat> so so to that point, and we talked about it in our manager meeting this morning, is at some point you have to say no. And you have to be okay to lose the deal because if you keep going backwards, at some point you have no more credibility because you've told them three or four times there's nowhere to go. This is all that there is, you know? And and I think that was part of the catalyst that, that made it okay for them to buy because they were looking all over the internet for a better deal right there in front of us. You had a notebook, right? You know, and there, it, there was no way that he was going to beat that deal. So, I mean, for them, it came down to money. She liked the car, so that's how they justified the higher payment, you know, than what was in the end. Now, the thing about that particular deal was that deal was going on when when Waylon also had a customer, mm -hmm. and there was a third customer here that I was working with too. Well, we both so everybody was kind of you know <coughs> triple teaming the whole the whole deal, but at the end, Waylon got his out. When you were out test driving the family, <coughs> he started working Sorry, on a credit app on the on the mom, because <coughs> she was still here while you were out driving. Mm -hmm. You got back. That's 10 minutes that we'd saved in the process because he stepped up to help you out, you know. And then, we, well, when you got back, then you finished out the credit app. We put the rest of the deal together, and, and off and away we went. And in the meantime, the third deal, you know, we figured out what we could and what we couldn't do for her. And, you know, we ended up not selling her a car that day, but, you know, she's probably going to buy a car from us down the road. But, you know, the whole team environment... You know, everybody was firing on all cylinders and was willing to help. Had had Waylon had Waylon not been willing to help get that credit app started for her, it had been another ten or fifteen minutes, and they were already didn't want to be out of here at nine thirty or ten o'clock at night. And we still left mm -hmm. late, even with his help. You know, so that's a big deal too. And I encourage all of you. You know, if if one of you guys needs help, to help. What do you got? Nothing really. What did you sell yesterday? Um, what did I sell yesterday? Nothing. GTI. Okay, so... Oh, I've been working with this guy for a couple of weeks. Is he the guy that, that we talked about on the our last meeting that was... Um, it was just a toy and... Yep. Okay, all right. Well, come on over here and tell us about him because in our last meeting we had... We talked about this, that uh -huh. he wanted the Accord with the turbo mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So, so how do we make this deal happen? So uh, basically, you just <clears throat> took his, uh, yeah, up 6,000, definitely, that's a big part of it. And uh, he actually researched a lot about our product. Mm -hmm. And most of, mostly he got good reviews you know, on the internet about GTI, about Volkswagen. And um, the, another thing was that the car he wanted to look at that uh, Honda is coming up with, that car is not out there. So then we talked about it. and. Yeah, you know what? You're getting great discount. You're getting a good deal. 
down the road, you want to trade it in, you will have a good value in it. So that actually, he said, you know what I thought about this exactly. This is a thing that's a route I think you should go. So you get to enjoy two toys instead of one and not losing money. So finally he came in and he said, you know what? I did a lot of research on this car and I got good reviews. Uh, it's, everything is good so far. Ended up making a good deal. But the deal I do want to talk about, uh, interesting deal, is the uh, Harvey Heiler deal. So he was so happy we actually, uh, <clears throat> we didn't. I don't think we we lost a lot of money with those guys, but the way we treated them, you know, they bought one, they came next day, they bought another one, they went home, they sent another person, and we sold them three cars in about a week, week, week and a half time period, because of building that report, right? And not only that, but going above and beyond because we had right. to get them a car, right? So we had to go out and find the right car. Right, work out the whole deal. Right. You know, we paid off their lease. Right. You know, so there's a lot of things that became advantage <clears throat> there, just like on your GTI deal, you know, you, you found a way to create advantage in the customer's mind that makes it okay to go ahead and do that deal. So same thing with with him is we went out, we got the car that he wanted or that his wife wanted, mm -hmm. right? And then because we did a good job doing what we did you know, he brought his daughter back and she bought a car. And then a couple of days later brought, you know, a friend came in and bought a car. Well, actually, they actually trusted us so much. He said, I'm coming in with my daughter. We're going to take a look at some of the used cars. So I pulled out a TDI and I parked in the back right there, you know, low mileage, nice car. I did not even take them over there. I said, this is the car. And they bought the same car. They did not ask to look at another car or another model or anything else. That was it. Because I pulled something, talking to them, this is what they want, you know. And I did not tell them it's a diesel until they come sitting across and that's a diesel car. And they were happy. They were happy about it. Well, when, when you guys are doing your, um, when you guys are doing your analyze phase, you know, you should also be thinking about that car in your mind. So when you're walking over to it and you get there, you know, you know, hey, that car that you were describing, that would be the perfect car. This is the one that I saw. Right. You know, and then you can create some some excitement about it, right? And then you show it to them, and, and off and away you go. Yeah. But because you knew that that's what she needed, you know, instead of taking her out to a sea of used cars and and following them around the used car lot and waiting for them to land themselves on something, pick the one that I you pick the one, that the one that's going to be the closest to what they need based on what you've heard, and then you walk out and you show it from that perspective, and then it is easy to. And there, there was no bargaining, no nothing. It was just smooth deal because they trusted us. So that's my point right here. You know, you got to build a report with them that they trust you. You're not gonna, you know, fuck them over. You know, you 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 care for them and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that trust is a big deal, and, that, yeah, and the it, trust I goes a long a way. Deal, yeah. The trust goes a long way. Cool, good job. What do you got? Where do you think that trust was built? Huh? Where was that trust built? The day Harvey Heiler came in. But why did he come? In? Because he did not ask about you. <laughs> <laughs> the trust was built three years ago when. when yeah, you sold you, it. Yeah, he he came in. He said uh, Keith sold us a car about two years ago. And he was, they were happy with the car, obviously, they bought a car from you. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's the there. thing, I mean, you know, so, so like, that's three years ago. But that was such exactly. a cluster. Right. That was, that was the biggest mistake that, that I think that dealership has ever made. But we made it right. The only thing he did mention, he said, oh, I, we, she just did not like back and forth, back and forth. I said, you know what, we'll eliminate that. Right. So that's what we did exactly. Under I brought new, Aaron. As, exactly. As soon as we go in there, I said, Aaron, I don't want to do back and forth with them because they don't like it because they mentioned that. Mm -hmm. And you came up with, you know, you just you know, talked to him straight and there, there you go. We ended up making a deal. Yeah. The only reason why we negotiated with him on the last one, the car, actually the terrain was on ad. So there was no negotiation there. His biggest problem was that it didn't have the side rails. Oh. So he wanted side rails added. And at the time we had, you know, new guy on the on the desk, new guy in finance, parts is closed. Yeah, 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 no problem, we'll do it. Okay, how much do you think it's gonna cost us? We don't know, but don't worry. Well, we don't want to not know. So it was back and forth, okay, 800, 1,000, whatever, we ended up on a price. It was totally thrown out the window because 
when you build the car through the parts department, it becomes a million dollars. We ate fifteen hundred dollars to trip that car. Right. So he was he was ecstatic. So but that that was the back and forth because we had no idea trying to go online and build a build a luggage rack and then try to figure out how much it was to install. So that was that was the only problem with that. But you know, it's funny you see people that you sell cars to around town, you know, at the intersection, how many times I go put the donut on it and he's sitting there with that car that I sold. Hey, beep, 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 hey, hey, you're, you're, yay. You know, and I showed them, uh, initially I showed them the uh, Ford Motion with more technology in it and they were like, obviously then it comes down to price and everything. And they were like, no, not this one, this one. So I sat down with them and I said, is all that technology important to you? So they said, nope. Prices. I said, okay. Then we went ahead and we found the car for them. And I said, what about full motion? You know, nope, this is the price. This is what we want. Okay, we brought the car. And the day I was doing the delivery, and she goes like, oh, what, is, what does that mean, full motion? It's all-wheel drive. So what do we have? I said, it's front-wheel drive. Oh, we, we're going to take it to snow and stuff like that. I said, well, that's what we talked about. Do you need a full motion? Do you care about that? Oh, you know, you said you don't. Well, yeah. How many times you go to snowy areas? Ah, not very often. Okay, <coughs> so let me show you something. And I showed them, you know, the new thing came out, the uh, snow sock, tire sock. I showed them that, printed out the thing, and uh, okay, off we go. Well, and that's a big deal too. You know, four motion to us is just what it is, right? right? And it's all wheel drive. Right. But a lot of people don't know that well, four motion is right. all wheel drive. You know, it's just like if you look in an Audi and it's a Quattro, that's just a word until it's explained. Yeah, yeah, it's because it's all wheel drive. All wheel drive. Yeah. Quattro. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. What time? Quattro drive. Up. You sold a Jetta yesterday. I did. Yeah. Uh, they they came in. They were dealing with uh, the W, and um, you know had to have the six grand off. Had to have six grand off. Had to have six grand off. You know we drove everything from all track to. GTI to GTI Autobahn to five speed. That's not Autobahn, by the way. No, we have a black Autobahn, too. Okay, because you, you, you were saying, and Wang was saying, is it an Autobahn? Why I said, no, it's not Autobahn. Because in our system, it says Autobahn, it's an SC. That's why there was a $6,000 discrepancy. Yeah. So the black one's an Autobahn. So we drove the black one. And then uh, it all came down to, okay, so we're all over the board. What are we going to do? What is it coming down to? Okay, we'll pay off our pay off our bug, get us a three eighty five or less with no money out of pocket, and we'll do it. So then we're on the wrong car. You need to go to a Jetta. Well, I don't want a Jetta. Okay, well then drive your bug. I don't know what to tell you, but that's not going to happen. There are no special programs. There's nothing. So if you think I'm talking like this Jetta, I'm pointing to an S for like eighteen grand. I go, no, I'm talking about this one over here. So I pulled it out, GLI. I go, it's going to be a push, but we have a better chance at this. And, you know, if you want to drive home right now, you can because, you know, I'm here till 7 anyway, so. But we can work on this. Well, all right, let's drive it. She drove it. I need a manual. I need a manual. And then I got her used to the paddle shifts, and then, then she liked it better. So once we got over that, then we walked in. We got her at 388 including tax. And a little bit. So let's talk about that. So, so she said, I have to have X. Oh, yeah, I have to have a GTI. I'm just going to drive the Alltrack because that's what my husband's got a Woody for. So we drove the Alltrack. He got his Woody. And she said, no, it's a wagon. So then we, we started driving GTIs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once it came down to, well, I got to have 385 and bury, you know, $2,200. No way. We're, we're on the wrong car, guys. This is not happening. You don't have any money. You know, I know you're 720, 780, that's great, but numbers are numbers. I got, I'm in the hole two grand already, plus everything else, drive off, blah, blah, blah. We need to go to a Jetta. And then thank God we had the GLI, and, and it worked. Now, do you want to talk about the Matthews deal? Remember uh, on a used T1? Sure. So we were making this deal. Well, hold on. But before we get there, I want, to, I want to touch on something that he said, which was, you know, she wanted a manual. And then you showed her the paddle shifters, and she then said, all of a sudden she liked, she liked that better. Sit. I'm not going to sit in an automatic key because, you know what, when we bought the bug, we drove a facade, it had the Triptronic, and guess what? It's a piece of shit. I'm not going to sit in an automatic. And I said, okay. So we drove the one that he sold, and I said, no, you know, here's the thing. 
driver error. You just, and she drove it really well, but driver error. I go, let me ask you this. Have you ever had the, the in your bug, have you ever had the time where it's like, gosh darn, I wish I could just throw this thing and drive and drive home. I'm tired. We've been on a long trip. I mean, you're not always a type of personality. Mm -hmm. they're, well, no, I like to drive. When I get behind the wheel, I like to drive. Well, I understand that. You mean to tell me out of, out of a, you know, 78,000 miles, you've never once said, I wish I didn't have to shift. And her husband goes, whoa. <laughs> so, so when you don't want to shift, you have him drive. I see how it is. She kind of looked at him and smiled. And I go, is that really fair? Is that really fair? I mean, honestly, I mean, you, you don't want to drive. So the reason why you're not driving is because you don't want to shift. So you make him drive and he doesn't want to drive. Mm -hmm. Let's just throw it in drive and, and let me show you something. And then once I showed her sport, then I showed her the plus and minus, And I let her make the decision. Yeah, they, they took their time. They walked around for forever. Hours. hours. Yeah. yeah, they were here all day. Yeah, and it's just like, I'm, I'm not going to push you into something. But, you know, if it all comes down to now 378 or less, there's your car. Otherwise, there's your car, and that's the one you drove in here. Now, I guarantee you this. You need a windshield. You need tires. You need this. They're going to kill you when you turn it in. So I don't care what you do because I'm not paying for it. If you want out now, I'm sure I can get my boss, you know, to, to hold it or do whatever and have the windshield put in. I'm sure you got a glass policy, right? you got glass on your insurance. Yeah, they'll replace it for free. That's part of your glass policy. So just go ahead and have the insurance pay for the the uh, thing when the inspector comes out if you need to put tires on it if they ding it for it great otherwise put some tires on it and then just turn it in because we don't want it we have to buy it for too much mm -hmm. so they left in two cars <laughs> again well and the and the point there is Badger. you know when when see this tie you know I'll sell cars I I'll and and I them. I see this all the time right absolutes you know I don't I don't think there actually is a such thing as a true absolute. There's always something in the middle that's going to be a better solution. As long as, they, so, as long as they can feel like it's their decision, that's all that matters. They don't want us to talk them into anything. Right. And, 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 you know, a lot of times it'll be, hey, I'm not telling you what to do, but I'll tell you what, there's a reason why they have the paddle shift in Formula One cars. They don't have the driver error. All the super cars have paddle shifters. Mm -hmm. I mean, Very nice. And the performance cars. I mean, well, I'm a man Again, they're paddle shifters. And I love the paddle shifters. Yeah. So. It just gives you three different transmissions. I mean, you can have the automatic, you can have the sport automatic, and then you can have the manual mode. So it's you get you'd be an idiot not to do that. But you know, we're around it all day long. We get numb to it. These people are climbing out of a four-year-old car, out of a four-year-old lease. You know, I mean, it's just it's it's. I remember getting out of my Nissan and into my Buick, and I thought I hit the lottery. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, when you use the pedal shifters, I get like that uh, that image in my head that like I'm driving a Formula One car. Yeah. So you, need, you need the Scion, man. You need the Scion. <laughs> you need so what was the deal that you wanted to talk about? The Matthew deal on a used TIG one. Um, so we're we making a deal, we're talking numbers, we're doing everything, and he's on his phone looking what's out there. And he... What's his social? His social? No. Not supposed to say names. Not supposed to say birthday, yeah, socials, everything. Yeah, let's stay away from names. And yeah. All right. So, but anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so we're on a take one. That guy. There's that guy. Remember that guy? Al Anonymous. We got a wanderer. Yeah. Okay, so the one guy. So, this guy. so anyway, um, uh, we're making a deal, and he's looking at you know online what's out there in the T1. So he found a one year newer and a thousand miles, 10,000 miles less than our car and just thousand dollars more. And with smart friends, you know, telling me, hey, this is a better deal. Let's just drive to Sacramento and get that. It's newer model, 10,000 miles less and just thousand bucks more. So we gave him another 700 off on the car. You remember that? Mm -hmm. So we gave him total $1,700 off as compared to that car and the left. Mm -hmm. so that was I, I was actually kind of I'm in the middle I'm making a deal we're doing numbers and you know all of a sudden they just on their phone internet find something and see him walking away well and that's that's something too you know even though a lot of people won't do it in front of you they will get on their phone and they will price shop you right, right. while they're while they're sitting here in our in our showroom yeah you know, that's why a lot why of people do that well making sure that you're staying with your people <clears throat> 
will cut that down quite a bit. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Two smart friends. Mm -hmm. They're doing that. Hey, look at that, man. Look at that. Right, right here, right there. Yep. And I'm sitting right there in front of them. Okay. All right. It looks better to me. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes it might and, be. And better. in their mind, it's only thousand dollar more than our car. We'll go there, we'll bargain, and we'll get the price down. That's what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, and that goes back to <coughs> our our ad that we ran because you know they see this ad, it looks like a better value. We'll go down there, we'll negotiate with them. Right. Right. Where you know we ran that Tiguan for two forty nine, and they're thinking the same thing. Oh, hey, that's a great deal. We'll go down there. We'll negotiate we'll with negotiate, them. Yeah. yeah, no, there is no negotiation. That's a beautiful thing about an ad like this is that's it. That's it. So you don't have to worry about going in so and wondering go if you like got a it, good deal. This is the best deal. People come on an ad deal. It's already discounted. If they go like bargain, tell them, hey, we actually eliminate that hassle for you already. So that is it. That's the price. That's the price. That's it. And mostly people understand that. Mm -hmm. Well, because they've looked everywhere else and they know. Yeah. Well, and some, most, well, I don't know about most, but a lot of people understand that ad deals are lost leader deals. They get people to the lot. If you want that ad deal, that's already rock bottom. Not really. And most people, a lot of people understand that. No. Then they want a blue one or they want one with Well, no, that's what I'm saying. But we use the ad deals to get them to the lot, and then the other cars aren't necessarily going to be that rock bottom. Mm -hmm. 